Welcome everybody to the Nutrition Theater at the Center for Health and Wellbeing. My name is Jackie Carlin. I'm the Community Education Director here. Um, thank you also to our at-home audience today. So this is one of our hybrids where we've got folks at home watching along and then you folks here in the theater are the lucky ones because you get to try everything. Every home, you'll make it on your own. So <laughs> is there anybody that's never been here before to the center? First timers, well, welcome, welcome. To the class. To center, never to a cooking class. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is great. And I can say this because we're all ladies. This is going to be a bunch of ladies around the kitchen table talking today. So um, let's just make sure our cell phones are turned off so we don't interrupt the process during it. But other than that, feel free to interrupt. If you've got questions along the way, wait for a natural point in the conversation. Those of you at home can use the chat box. I will ask your questions here in the theater. Allison and Amber, I haven't told you this yet. Please repeat their questions into the microphone because the Got folks it. at home never hear the questions. So okay. it can be about an ingredient. It can be about the topic. It can be about health. Probably not going to diagnose any specific issues in here, just so you know, even though we've got somebody like Dr. Amber Orman, but sometimes we might take a pass on a specific <laughs> question. So, but we want this to be a really hands-on learning experience in terms of you guys getting lots of information out of it. So all these cooking classes are, are open to the public. Anybody can come in and join them. And we're so happy those that come in here get to sample some of the great food. Everybody, regardless of your home here, will get a link to the video afterwards. So if you want to watch it again or share it with a friend who couldn't be here today, we'll send that link out afterwards along with the recipe booklet, a digital version of it as well. One last housekeeping thing, you will get a survey afterwards. That's a great opportunity to tell us not only how today went, but Allison and I were already starting to talk, what are we doing next year? Yeah. So this is your perfect time to say, I've always wanted to learn how to cook with this kitchen tool or this ingredient or for this disease specific. So let us know because we are actively planning January, February, and March right now. So mm -hmm. without further ado, let me do a couple quick introductions. First, those, a lot of you know Allison Harrell, but for those of you who don't, she's a dietitian, nutritionist, and a culinary medicine specialist. And she's been passionate about food and nutrition for more than 20 years. She uh, advanced her knowledge by becoming certified culinary medicine specialist, certified in weight loss management. And she believes every time we eat, it's an opportunity to improve our health. I love Allison because she's always just talking about what to eat, not what not to eat. Mm -hmm. So, which is a really fun way of thinking of food. So we have her here all the time. And not only are you guys going to learn a lot about food and ingredients today, she's the kitchen gadget queen. So <laughs> my kitchen is completely different now since working with Allison. I don't have dull knives anymore. She's going to tell you why at some point, I'm guessing. So I won't spoil her fun. So thank you, Allison, for being here. And we're very excited to welcome the first time for our food is medicine, Dr. Amber Orman. She is a bit of a rock star in town for those of you who seen her on she's been on tv all month long she's been all over the place and she's a double certified radiation oncologist and a lifestyle medicine specialist focusing on breast cancer treatment and prevention she is the first ever chief wellness officer of the advent health medical group and she's working to improve the well-being of her colleagues which it's probably a tall task. <laughs> I think people think doctors I'm are healthier. <laughs> <laughs> so um, also she's the co-founder of the HEAL, Healthy Eating and Active Lifestyle Program at Advent Health in Orlando. So I'll let you talk about that a little bit more as you go on. I won't steal your thunder on that. But she collaborates with the American College of Lifestyle Medicine as a member of the Health Systems Council and serves as the chair of the Cancer Member Interest Group. So we are so thrilled to have you here. Welcome. It's a pleasure. And to be she here. runs a lot. And like she runs over, a lot. Over a hundred miles. Like <laughs> and she doesn't sleep, we've learned. Yeah. I don't know how she Seven does hours. it all. Seven hours. Okay, she, does. she just goes to bed very early because she yes. gets up very early. Yes. So I think what we're gonna do is get started. I'm gonna let Allison kick off by telling you what she's yes. gonna prepare today, and then we will get into our program. Okay. So today we are gonna be making a te tempeh tacos, and we will be eating it with some yummy vegan. Um, queso. This is Amber's or Dr. Orman's favorite dish. That's and so um, we wanted to include that. <laughs> and um, we are also going to be doing edamame guacamole. And I also made in advance some um, delicious, amazing chocolate pudding made with some tofu. And it, it tastes, you would have no idea that is tofu is in it. I even tricked my husband with it. So um, before we get started, I just wanted to point out a few things because I need to get things um, cooking. I am, I, dice up some carrots and um, potatoes, and I need to um, boil these first, so for about 10 minutes, so I'm throwing that in there, and, you know, bless, bless these tools, because these, this I use to prepare, there was a lot of chopping in the past, I would do it with a knife, and I would be cutting all day long, so I love this gadget, because it can do a small dice, and it's really simple and easy, so, um, I'm going to let these boil to get soft and for 10 minutes. And then one other thing I just want to point out, this is tempeh. 
Does anyone know what tempeh is? Okay, it's a fermented soybean. So um, this is what it looks like. It comes in this package when in the grocery store, you'll find it in Publix in the produce section where all the vegan and ve vegetarian things are. And I'm just gonna crumble this up to make the um, tempeh tacos. Okay, you can take it away now. <laughs> so fun. So I primarily treat breast cancer. And so we talk about soy often, you know, and it's October and we talk a little more about breast cancer in October. So we thought timely time yes, to talk about soy. Definitely. And um, soy is kind of, it's very misunderstood when you go, you know, online to blogs or social media sites or whatever. There's a lot of um, fear surrounding soy and breast cancer. And people are, even physicians are under the impression that soy might cause breast cancer or it might be dangerous for somebody who's been diagnosed with breast cancer to consume it. But when we look at the data, it actually prevents breast cancer in the first place and it prevents breast cancer recurrence and it works in all breast cancer patients. So it doesn't even matter if your tumor is one of these hormone responsive type tumors with an estrogen receptor on it. Um, and the reason Soy actually works on a different receptor in a breast cancer cell than our human estrogen, okay? So it has a different effect. So while our human estrogen can actually be food for a breast cancer cell, it can grow breast cancer, soy actually turns it off. So our human estrogen turns breast cancer cells on and soy products actually turn them on. Um, but they molecularly look a little similar and so that's part of the reason we have this kind of mass confusion in the literature. Uh, but when you actually look at studies, it's really clear that there's a beneficial effect. So we can kind of put the breast cancer piece to rest. Now, why else would you want to eat soy? It is an incredibly uh, wonderful source of protein, okay? And then we talk about that concept of a complete protein. Welcome. And, you know, it's really something that we've kind of debunked over time. A complete protein has a full complement of essential amino acids, and those are the amino acids that we don't manufacture in our body. But in reality, when we eat foods, yeah. everything has protein in it. Even the cucumber and the carrot have protein in them, just in smaller amounts. And our body takes it all in, breaks it all down into amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins, and we store them. And so we have a big, you know, storage bucket in our body somewhere. Maybe it's like under our left arm over here. I don't know. <laughs> and that's a joke. We don't have a bucket <laughs> in there. Um, but we store those amino acids in our body so that they're ready when we need to build things. Okay. And you don't have to eat all of the essential amino acids in one tidy food, you know, to allow your body to do what it needs to do. Um, but soy does actually contain all of the essential amino acids, okay? Um, it's also a really amazing source of protein, okay? We're kind of protein obsessed in this country, yes, um, <laughs> which is to our detriment, it turns out. But it is a good source of plant-based protein. Um, and it's very high in antioxidants as well. So it's a very, um, it's a beneficial food in multiple ways. But we do want to, you know, when you look at these packages, you'll see that we're choosing organic soy as often as possible. And at a minimum, non-GMO soy. Okay. And anything labeled organic will be exactly. non-GMO. Exactly. Um, and so good sources. I think tempeh is one of the best sources of soy. It's one of the least processed sources and it's fermented. So there's like this additional benefit of it being a fermented product. You get some good bacteria in your gut along with the, the soy itself. Um, after soy, after tempeh, which is just fermented soybean pushed together, we kind of move down the line to a little more processed tofu, mm -hmm. which is in the, the pudding today. Um, and that is soybeans kind of blended with water and a couple other things and pushed into a block. You know, we all know what tofu looks like, just that amorphous white stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have other things like soy milk, okay? They're a little more processed, watered down tofu, essentially. Um, and then and edamame, edamame are the whole soybeans. Right, yeah. So not processed at all. So 
these things are are wonderful to incorporate into your diet on a regular basis. I love this, the soybeans, you can find them in the freezer section and they come in a box with like six packets. So if I'm home and I know I need to have a little bit of extra protein with my meal, I'll throw that on. I've even roasted those and they actually start tasting like peanuts when you roast them. It's really delicious. Yeah. Yeah. That's another way. You know, when we, sometimes when we're changing the way that we eat, you know, we're maybe going towards a more plant-based diet because we've heard more plants, you know, are a good thing, which is true, but we may be eating too many nuts and seeds right. in the process. And that's we're very trying high to get calories. In. Yeah. And so roasted edamame, you can even buy it pre-roasted, is a nice nut-like thing that doesn't have all the fat and the calories in it. And right. so it's a kind of a satiating, crunchy thing. Mm-hmm. It kind of gets you where the nuts would get you in terms of mouthfeel and satiety without being so calorically dense. Yeah. And you've been plant-based for how many years? It's like, I think about 17 years, wow. a long, long time. Um, and I, you know, I started this kind of journey because I, I grew up on a farm in Indiana And we had cows on our land and we didn't actually raise the cows, but we would rent a field out and people would let their cows just, you know, hang out and do what cows do. And then as part of the payment, we'd get a cow butchered every year. And so I was eating, you know, hormone free, grass fed, you know, all the buzzwords, fancy meat uh, when I was growing up. And then I went away to college and the meat in the cafeteria didn't taste like the meat at home. And I'm like, how is a cow not a cow? Like what's (laughs) going on here? And I really started to learn about nutrition when I was in my undergraduate engineering career. And it was because of that. And also because I needed to optimize the way I was able to perform in my life. Like I knew I needed all A's in this engineering school. I was going to med school. It was going to be hard. You know, I wanted to be able to really achieve, you know, all of these things. And so I started retooling my food and, you know, working on my sleep and my movement and kind of got myself to a place where I could handle all the stress of the engineering school and then the med school and the residency and, uh, and studying along the way. And so that personally got me to that point. And then it just naturally became part of my medical practice when I, um, I went to Miami for my radiation oncology residency. And I kind of connected with this group studying functional medicine. Uh-huh. And so I completed a functional medicine program there in tandem with my radiation oncology residency. Oh, wow. And I was just kind of fascinated that neither of the things intertwined. Nowhere in my medical school curriculum did we talk about food or movement or sleep or stress, nothing. Right. It's and so sad. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, it's sick care, not health care. And so... It, that was a problem for me. Um, and so I incorporated that into my practice when I was at Moffitt Cancer Center and then later came up on lifestyle medicine and got board certified in lifestyle medicine, which was kind of what I'd been doing already with the functional medicine approach. Right. I was very, I've always been very, let's get it in the food, food heavy, and let's do what we can with our life and then bring in supplements and pills if we really have gaps after we we address our lifestyle um and so lifestyle medicine is really kind of where i found my my home in the way that i practice yeah now Mm -hmm. um with my with my patients i love that so we mentioned the heal program why don't you share more about what that program is i love the concept yeah so heal is like my heart so heal is this eight-week lifestyle medicine program that Kind of, I was going to launch this at Moffitt, um, and then I got married <laughs> and I had to blow my life up. So I had to leave Moffitt and move to Orlando because the guy that I married, and I'm still married to him, uh, lives in Orlando. And we weren't able to kind of, you know, me be in Tampa and him be in Orlando for a lot of reasons. And so I found Advent Health, and it was just a good fit. Um, for me. And so I came to Advent Health and eventually we started the HEAL program. Um, It's three years now, over three years it's been going. And it's for now all cancer patients. So anybody with a cancer diagnosis is welcome to attend. 
um, and it's an eight week series of classes. So we meet for 90 minutes a week, eight weeks in a row. And we talk about food and movement and sleep and stress, the emotions around a cancer diagnosis. We talk about um, grief. We talk about acupuncture and mindfulness and all of these different things to really help optimize the way that these patients are living so we can reduce risk of recurrence and even reverse some of the stuff they've got going on. So I've had plenty of patients put their diabetes into remission and reverse their high blood pressure and their cholesterol normalizes and they lose weight, you know, and so we see these, you know, kind of transformations in this program, but the real strength of the program is that it's delivered in groups. And so community building is the foundation upon which HEAL is successful. And so cancer, even though it's very common, is very isolating high and lonely. And, mm -hmm. you know, especially for women who have been taking care of other people and just, it's always been about someone else and yeah. maybe neglecting self-care and suddenly here we are. And it's like, now nobody's really able to help them in the way that they need. And so it's a very isolating thing. And so we bring people together and they have, you know, of course, resources in the group, but also accountability and, you know, encouragement and inspiration from others. And it's just this beautiful thing that's been building over these three years. So now is we, that only for the patient or can their spouse or or partner come? So what we've been doing is the we don't formally invite partners yet, uh -huh. but if somebody really wants, you know, a partner to attend, we try to accommodate that. Gotcha. Um, there is a session about kind of side effects of cancer treatment that's much more sensitive and intimate. And we're talking about, you know, all the things that can happen to the female body after we shut your hormones off. Yeah. And so that session, we don't have anybody but the patients attend right. um, so that everybody's comfortable kind of talking through the yeah. issues that probably haven't been addressed. Right, right. So then you complete the eight-week program, and then we go into an alumni program, and then that's like forever yeah. till the end of time. So we have like a hundred and, you know, actually it's over 200 women wow. now in the alumni group. So what do you do and with the meet, alumni? Well, like, we meet monthly. Okay. And we, they pick the topic. I do a deep dive on whatever they want to learn about, or I bring in a guest. That's um, so cool. And so like next week, we're talking about um, postmenopausal uh, changes and what happens with hormone, you know, blockade therapy uh -huh. and how can we help with the side effects. And that is amazing. We're going to really do a deep dive on adaptogens. What can we do with adaptogens uh -huh. in these people? You know, are there any herbal things that can help? And so that sounds like a topic for everybody. Yeah, like it is. Everyone. It That's is amazing. It is. ever. And how can you yep. get, get into the HEAL program? So to get into the HEAL program, you go to Advent Health Cancer Institute's webpage uh -huh. and search for HEAL, or you can actually just put in the Amber Worm and the HEAL program, uh -huh. you know, and you pop right on. Okay. Um, there's a gynecologic program separate from mine with Dr. Natalie McKenzie. And so gynecologic cancer patients typically will go into that program with her. There, we are kind of co-founders of this program, but our programs are separate, and we've each designed our our eight-week programs differently. So, yeah. All right, I'm gonna jump. Oh, so go ahead. No, it's now open for any anybody with a cancer diagnosis. And my goal, honestly, is for it to be open for all humans. You know, that's really what I think I'm trying to. You know, get Let's my career to a point where yeah, we get to have heal for. Anybody, and you yeah. don't need to be sick right. to be in heal because this will just is preventative medicine. Yes. yes, yes. No, so it's covered by insurance. Yeah, so if it's basically billed like you would come in and see me in the office, it's just like an office visit. So you just make sure I'm a covered provider on your insurance. So that's how it works. Yeah. What you doing, Allison? All right. So <laughs> I'm next. I'm doing the vegan cheese sauce. So I, we, in the vegan cheese sauce, we have cashews and I soak them overnight. When I made this um, earlier in the week, I didn't soak them overnight. So you don't have to necessarily do that. You can boil it for 
boil water and um, soak it for 30 minutes in hot water. But I did um, soak it overnight and that um, adds some additional protein to this. And then we, I boiled these um, potatoes in my pot. I gotta show you this pot because I am the, the kitchen gadget queen. I love this. I have a small kitchen with no storage space and I was so annoyed with all my pots and pans just like wreaking habit. This, they nest in um, each other. So I have a whole set and it just like piles up all together and I have two little handles that I can have and it's amazing. So I just um, boiled the potatoes and carrots and they're steaming and I'm gonna put that in here. And what's gonna make it have a cheesy flavor is something called nutritional yeast. And um, it has vitamin B12 in it. So if you are a vegan, a lot of times you can potentially become deficient in vitamin B12. So adding in food sources like nutritional yeast is a great way to add in some B12 into your diet. Now this recipe doesn't have soy, but it's one of Dr. Orman's favorites. It's like, like my favorite party <laughs> trick, this cheese sauce. And I she's make like, this all the gotta time. have it. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'll make it in the class. <laughs> so I did make the um, pudding in advance with the tofu because it has to chill overnight. So I'm like, we make three recipes. So I'm gonna add it in the queso. I love it. So now I'm doing the, um, adding all the ingredients to the blender and I'm gonna blend it until it's smooth. So next I'm adding in our nutritional yeast. I'm doubling the recipe. So if you're looking at, at what I'm doing, the recipe is doubled. Um, we have a- You know, when I make this recipe at home because I have three teenagers and the 15 year old eats like probably what three grown men would eat like <laughs> each meal, I will make this recipe times six. Whoa. Yes. And then I'll freeze if I have something left, yeah, you know, but the kids will just devour this. And the cool thing about it is it's mostly potatoes and carrots. Mm -hmm. There's not really like proportionally a lot of cashews in it. Right. And so it is a really healthy cheese sauce. And I mean, you can put it on potatoes. We make vegan nachos. You can put it in burritos. I mean, you can put it on like- I've been eating it all week. Anything. Yeah, it's I, so it's, good. It's delicious. I put it on the tacos. Yeah. I've been making bowls with beans and rice and yeah, mm, delicious. Um, And then I, I'm glad you said you freeze it because that's good to know that you yes. can do that. Cause I love meal prepping. If you're going to make the a mess in the kitchen, you don't want to be- um you know, doing this every single day. So it's good to prepare yeah. things and put it in the freezer. I have tempeh tacos in my freezer right now. So when I'm like, oh, I have no time to make lunch. I can just quickly grab Get it that. Out there. Yeah, I do the same. And I would say this cheese sauce, when you, I actually, did we omit the oil in it? Yes. Okay. Yep. So the recipe, the original recipe, I mess with every recipe I make almost always. And so there's coconut oil in the original recipe from the website that it came off of. And you don't need it. I omit it. And I like it better without it. Um, it's a little uh, runnier and more cheesy spready. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's nice without it. And then you can mess with the seasonings. You can make it spicier. You can add a little more nutritional yeast. If yeah, I doubled the nutritional enough. yeast, like you said. Perfect. So, and it's delicious. Yeah. So, but it's, uh, it's one of those things where people say, this doesn't have cheese in it. I mean, it is so good. And I'll make a crock pot of it for a party and make a big thing of like taco bowls. Uh -huh. And people just assume that's cheese and they eat it and they just, you know, nobody knows. It's kind of cool. Okay, this, okay. I have a paper I put out and I want you to write your email and I'm going to give you an email with a, my Amazon store link. And it has all my favorite gadgets in there. Yeah. Yeah. So have you had your estrogen levels drawn and they're high? Okay. Are you eating dairy? Okay. So 
there's a million different reasons for infertility. So we won't probably solve that today, but typically what can move the needle on it is increasing fiber. Okay. And so you're already, you know, if you're a vegetarian, you're eating mostly plants, pulling the dairy out completely can help decrease inflammation in the body because it has a beneficial effect on your gut microbiome. Okay. So dairy we don't really have the enzyme to process cow breast milk after about the age of two or three. And I love all, the way you say that cow breast milk. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. That's um, how I noticed. <laughs> yeah. So we're not baby cows. So that <laughs> lactase enzyme, it starts to wane. And most people are in fact lactose intolerant, but it may not be uh, perceptible to you because we're kind of always eating it and we're always just experiencing what it feels like to be on dairy. Sometimes pulling that out can really be a game changer in your health. And so that can help improve the health of your gut microbiome, okay? And which lowers inflammation and helps your immune system kind of function better. There may be a little bit of insulin resistance uh, at play here. That's usually part of, of infertility in some way, shape, or form. That's also helped by incorporating more plants and less animal products, all of them included, you know, eggs, dairy, uh, of course, fish, meat, and chicken. Sorry. So that may be something, you know, to try is, okay, can I really shift more towards whole plant foods and pull what little animal product is in, you know, out of the diet and see if you're able to, to move the needle. So soy is fine. Yep, yep, soy is fine. It does not behave like our human estrogen, okay? Uh, it behaves differently than our human estrogen. Even though it's called a phytoestrogen, they're like molecularly very different. And yeah. when I, I went to school in, in the, uh, I graduated in 96. I was trained that avoid soy. And that's back yep. then, that's what it was. And yep. so I'm really excited for this topic today because this research yep. shows it is good and it, it helps prevent cancer and a whole host of other things. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so I think also, depending on when the physician was trained, they may not be up to date on the newest And they probably didn't even hear anything about soy. I mean, we don't talk about nutrition in medical yeah. school typically. True. There's none in mind. So, you know, their information has probably come from some site on the internet may or may not have been even valid, you know, or just kind of word of mouth stuff, you know, so, but the data that supports soy. Now, if you want organic soy, we don't want to be eating like soy protein isolates. We want whole organic soy. So tempeh, tofu, edamame, soy milk, you know, like soy sauce is not a good, you know, source of soy. That's a very processed thing. Um, these other things are much better. Yeah. I'm going to make it really loud. So sorry. This is your soy bed. Is I didn't use mine. <laughs> Unsweetened soy. And there's a brand called West Soy that's just soybeans and water. That can, one and can Trader you Joe's. Use, you just said because I was West so rude soy. with it. Sorry. Yeah. I usually have to add more water to it. Too. Okay. You probably, yeah, I would add more water and it'll really cream up and get silky. Perfect. Okay. Um, West soy, like the direction West, West soy. So that's a great brand. It's organic soybeans and water. And where do you get that? Um, you can find it just at random grocery stores. I actually just ordered a case from Amazon and it was cheaper than it was in the store. Oh, good. Um, now you can also is get, this temp, is this tempeh you're talking about or soy milk? Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 And it's un, get the unsweetened, plain unsweetened, and that will translate into whatever you want to use it in. If it's, you know, a dish or just, you know, it won't be sweetened in a weird taste, you know, um, Trader Joe's store brand, the shelf stable one, you know, that won't be in the refrigerator section. That's another good option. It's just soybeans and water, organic soybeans and water. Um, and then beyond that, you know, almond milk is a decent plant milk. Almonds take a lot of water to grow. So I really am at the point, you know, this many years in, I'm trying to think about, okay, like what happened before this product got to the shelf? Can I make a better decision? You know, oat milk can be a good option too. Um, unsweetened oat milk. 
oat milk has a lot of carbs in it. And if I'm going to have carbs, I want to eat my bread. Is yeah. what I say. It's not a, you know, it's not good. If you have any sort of kind of insulin resistance at play, it's not the best choice for a milk, but it can be good. Like if you're trying to switch your creamer over and you just need a little creamer and you want to not consume dairy, oat and soy are the creamiest kind of next to dairy milk, you know, substitutes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's a good question. So the question is, does soy affect your thyroid? Um, there, I'd say it's not well studied and kind of one of those soy fears that are out there. If you have no thyroid issues, don't worry about it. If you have thyroid issues, you're unlikely to eat enough to do anything to your thyroid. I think it's one of those things that is more a theoretical concern than an actual concern. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually thyroid issues are inflammation and inflammation is just a global thing that's happening. And the reality is we probably need to work on, you know, how can we clean up the rest of the diet than like obsess over, you know, soy. And I, I see a lot of patients who are kind of in that space with soy. Yeah, you can do that. And then we'll start working on other things. Like let's pull the processed meats out and the red meats and let's work on these other things. And then you're able to eat a little soy as a protein replacement and actually see improvements in thyroid function. Yeah, yeah. And I have heard men concerned about soy and man boobs. Oh, yes. Another myth. You don't get man boobs soy. Um, yeah, that just doesn't work that way. Usually, you know, that's an estrogen driven thing. And that's usually a product of too much extra body weight, which is converting testosterone to estrogen in your body. So when we have high, high estrogen, it's usually being made in our extra adipose tissue by an enzyme that we actually turn off in breast cancer patients happy. with pills. Um, the aromatase enzyme um, is what we try to turn off. And that takes testosterone and converts it to estrogen. And it works in our bodies no, and in male bodies. Shocking, are you good? So, yeah. That's really good. Uh -huh. I would say a, that's fine. A <laughs> serving a day, you know, maybe two servings a day. You're fine. You're not going to be eating, you know, a ton of it. Yeah. So I'd say work on the other areas. The dairy is low hanging fruit, dairy and eggs, and then bring in, you know, uh, different plant uh, dairy replacements that are clean instead. Yeah. And your eggs can be replaced. I mean, you can make nice like tofu frittatas and tofu little frittata muffins, you know, and freeze them. There's all kinds of nice things you can do. You can make chickpea omelets. Mm. You know, there's a lot of different replacements for kind of that egg type thing. Yeah. The yogurt, yeah. Correct. And there are some really nice yogurt uh, alternatives. You can find even Greek yogurt. So Kite Hill has a really nice, it's almond based, but it's an almond milk Greek yogurt. Kite Hill, like fly a kite. kite yeah, yeah, that's kite good. Hill. And they make a cream cheese too. I, yeah. I served it to my son and he had no idea that it wasn't milk, like dairy based yeah. cream cheese. Yeah, it's funny. I have a so question from home too. So for those probiotics. kids, he's talking about probiotics and yeah. alternatives to yogurt. It's exactly what someone asked. Yeah, it's interesting. So a lot of yogurts are marketed as a good source of probiotics. And because of regulations, we have to pasteurize most dairy. 
So the yogurts made, it did have nice probiotics in it, but we heated it and killed them all. And then they'll dump a probiotic back into it basically okay. before it's packaged. So you want to be eating actual fermented foods like tempeh mm -hmm. and sauerkraut and miso and kimchi. And you can buy the plant-based yogurts are not pasteurized. They actually have the original bacteria, you know, that are in there with the fermentation project or pro, uh, fermentation process. So, you know, it's, it's just a marketing thing really. And, you know, I would also say, unless you've been on antibiotics, you probably don't really need a probiotic as long as you're eating enough variety, enough different types of plants in a given week. Okay. And so the magic number is 30 plants in a week mm -hmm. that gives you maximal gut microbiome diversity. And, and you can eat, I mean, if you just, we're going to have 30 plants here today yeah. just in the ingredients. I guarantee yeah. it without even, you know, looking at the list, you're going to reach 30 herbs and here. spices count as yeah. well. So it's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Different. Yeah. So. so like I had one of my best friends, she ate, eats the same thing every single day. And she showed up that she had nutrient deficiency because she ate the same thing every single day. <laughs> So you really want to have some variety and it's like what you're talking about, the amino acids and the, you know, yeah. you want to have a variety of different foods to build protein and get different amino acids from the foods that you're eating. Well, when you're talking about probiotics, I know this is another subject, like there's supplements from probiotics, which I know is always, they're not regulated. They're not, you know, whatever Correct. it is, you know, I mean, is what do you recommend supplements ever, especially if somebody is going with a plant-based diet? So you do, in fact, need to take a B12, okay? So B12 is uh, made actually in microorganisms in dirt, okay? And it's not actually made in anybody's body. It's not made in the cow's body or the chicken's body or our body. It's made in dirt. And so we have to, when we're not eating any animal flesh, we've got to take a B12 animal or flesh. eat dirt, you know? Those are the options. And most people choose to just take a B12. So you, when you switch from, you know, plant-based, if you're fully off of animal products, then you do have to take a B12 or you'll get into trouble. That's really the one essential thing. Now, most people do need to take a D3. Most of us are vitamin D deficient, even in Florida. We just don't get out and have 20. I mean, you got to have like, you're basically going to be nude sunbathing right. from the waist up, you know, to get your vitamin yeah. D every day. And I'm not doing that <laughs> 20 minutes a day, a couple of days a week. So everybody needs to really take a, a vitamin D. Your dose would depend on your level. So I can't, you know, tell you what you would need. Um, and then beyond that, supplementation is really tailored. You know, are you eating enough omega-3s in your diet? If not, maybe we add an omega-3. Um, and, and, and do primary care physicians, uh -huh. is that on the normal panel or do you specifically have to, you gotta ask? Yeah. 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 Some people will kind of order that routinely. I'd say most don't. So a, a vitamin B level and a vitamin D level are nice things to get just once a year to see where you are. And that can guide how much you need to be supplementing, you know, in your life. Yeah. So is it better to take a B12 or a B complex? Um, unless you have specific needs for other B vitamins, you can get them through your food. So I take a B12, okay? Um, I actually take a product that is has B12, D3, plant-based omega-3s, and algae oil, and then it has a little uh, boron and selenium and iodine in it. Um, it's called Complement Plus. And it's a, it's a multivitamin of sorts, but it's a very smart multivitamin that's well sourced and it doesn't have just all this list of like A, D, K, you know, all these things that you really can get in your food and you don't need to be like supplementing with. Um, so it's, it's a nice product. So what do you think of the cheese? Isn't it amazing? It's like a party trick. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you're eating mostly potatoes and carrots and nutritional yeast. 
so I'm gonna get loud. Yeah. And the whole I think she doubled it. And let's see. Yeah. Doubled is only a half cup in the whole recipe that you're eating between all of you. So it's wonderful. Yeah. So this is the edamame guacamole. Yeah. I'm very excited about. Yummy. I doubled this recipe as well. Dr. Robin, there was a question from someone. Where do you get Compliment Plus? It's an online thing. Um, I order directly from their website. You can get it on Amazon, but I always worry, was it sitting in a warehouse somewhere or where did it come from? Um, so their website is called lovecompliment.com. Um, and it's, uh, they have a lot of different things now. Um, but that, that vitamin in particular, I really like. And I, in my, I have an email list and I will look that up and put that link on in there. the email Perfect. as a follow-up. Perfect. Yeah, it's a capsule. Um, the other interesting thing, omega-3s. So sometimes we'll be taking fish oil. Omega-3s actually come from algae. Mm -hmm. Fish eat algae. We eat fish. A byproduct of the fishing industry is fish oil. You smash yeah. a bunch of fish flesh and fish oil comes out of it. Yeah. So then we're getting microplastics and heavy metals in the fish oil capsules. Yeah. Go straight to the source and take algae oil yeah. instead of fish oil. And I it's can't just remember like my oil. parents eating the cod liver oh, oil. And I'm like, I awful. never want to do that. Then you're like Belching. burping it up and bad, bad, bad. So no, it, that's, yeah. that's why I, I hate fish. I don't like to eat fish. I don't like the taste of it, smell of it. So I do the algae omega-3s because it bypasses and yeah. you have no flavor, not at all. Yeah. I'll include that in the email as well. Pardon? What'd you say? Yeah. No, no, I dumped it. I could have if I didn't. Yeah. yeah. It's like a very forgiving recipe. Yeah. I'll typically, I won't even peel my potatoes or my carrots. I'll wash oh. them, use the peels. My fingers. I, I know. About the I didn't tell I you got that. the bozo potatoes that were this big. <laughs> I put a lot of love in this, this recipe for you guys. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just like rough chop chunks. Oh boil my it all. gosh. Thank you for all telling me. Sorry. <laughs> next time. The next one, the next one we're doing. Yeah. And then you get the peel. There's more fiber in the peel. Yeah. And boil it all. And then I'll save the water that I boil the potatoes and carrots in and just oh, put as that. much as I need in yeah. the blender. Um, and that way you get a little more of the starch in there. And so um, that's a nice way to, to do it too. I'm always thinking about what ca can I use every single bit yeah. of stuff um, when I'm making something. So less food waste. So I'll use this as a plug. Do you compost at home? I do. And we each compost here at the center too. We use O-Town composting. So for those of you who don't it's we throw all of our food scraps into it. We've got big bins and it's being used to make really nutrient dense soil and being used around Orlando. So a little plug for our partners at O Town Composting. We've yes. we've direct we've diverted something like a thousand pounds a month from the cafe here that we're doing now since we start doing Wonderful. it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. And, yeah. and also what you could do with left, like I wouldn't do it with this, but at home, if I'm cutting up peppers, onions, carrots, I will save all the scraps in a freezer bag and then make a stock with it. Yeah. And then, then you compost it. Yes. Yeah. All right. There's so many so I'm going to, this, you can, can do. we can, do we have any more chips? Okay. That's a whole bag, but we can put this on the, um, the tacos. So Everybody grab some lettuce. I have more over there and you can grab a few of the chips and we're going to do the, the tacos are going to be a little bit messy because they're on the, um, on the, um, 
lettuce leaves, but that's okay. We're all friends and we have napkins. Yeah, eat over your plate. You could grab one or two (laughs) and I have more over here. These pots are too heavy to pass around. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'd add to like, you can do so many things with your body when you're eating cleanly. And so I'm over time, I've actually become an ultra marathoner. (laughs) And so now I have a a literally a hundred mile run coming up in April that I'm training for in the mountains. How long does that take? It's going to take about 24 hours, I'm sure. And you're not sleeping. You're no, just going. You're not sleeping. <laughs> oh it's like an God. eating contest with movement yes. involved. So how many calories do you think you eat in a day of a hundred miles? Oh, goodness. Well, that day, I mean, really, you need to be taking in, you know, 300 an hour while you're moving plus what you kind of ate before you got there and what are you eating yeah i mean and being well based like it's not a high calorie well it's it's more about um the quality of the food and how quickly you can kind of you know assimilate it right you know if you just put it in it goes straight through right it's not going to help so i eat i actually eat tofu sandwiches while i'm running wow so (laughs) i eat a sandwich (laughs) so i'll toast i have this uh I make my own sourdough bread, Ooh. like a gluten-free vegan sourdough I, with I a bunch of you have time amazing grains. Work. I mean, <laughs> well, I am like a master of like efficiency and yeah. I'm very regimented because that's a, the only way I can survive. Totally. Yeah. So that's how I do it. And I have systems for everything, you know, yeah. so I have to be very intentional and it works. I'm you know, do a lot and I've got it together. Like I'm not about to break. And you're not, <laughs> you're, you're always very Zen and chill. Like I would be yeah. stressed out if I was yeah. like all these things. I think, um, I think working in the field that I work in close to so much grief and suffering. Yeah. Really just, I'm constantly grateful for what I have and what I'm able to do in my life and with my body and you know, the way that I'm able to serve people, I think you just stay yeah. so grounded in that, that yeah. things don't stress you, right. you know, in a deep way. Yeah, I'll get, right. I can get flustered, but it's like quickly, like, all right, deep breath, move yeah. on, you know, Focusing so on abundance and yeah. yeah. And, you know, and I've got my day arranged so that I have adequate time for myself in the morning to really set myself up for success yeah. the rest of the day. Yeah. And this is why I get up at four. No, it's dark. It's quiet. Nobody's calling. Nobody's emailing. No, one it is a <laughs> beautiful time of the day when I can just focus on myself. Yeah. And I have basically from four until about seven 30 uh-huh. to have my coffee and to sit quietly and then to do my workout take a shower and then boom, hit the clinic, doing 17 things at one time, yeah. getting home, feeding the kids, packing lunches for the next day, falling asleep. And then I have like my quiet, you what know, what time do you go to bed? I try to be asleep by nine. Wow. Cause I want seven hours. That's kind of the magic number for seven, seven to nine yeah. for adults. Seven works for me. And um, how do you get your kids to go to bed? Are they going to bed at nine? Or are you trusting I that they go to bed? Don't care what they do. <laughs> they are 13, 14, and 15. They all yeah. need to launch into this world. If they want to stay up late and suffer, like I see it, like, okay, make that mistake now and learn not to do it until right. you're like off in college and have to learn that. Right. So I don't micromanage my kids. Uh-huh. They have structure, you yeah. know, but I try not to be like micromanagey about homework and bedtime. Used to be. Yeah. But at a point we let that go just to let them learn self-regulate yeah learn what happens when you you know don't do those things 13 14 15 do we need more lettuce kind of well I say we we really start kind of releasing the reins at about the age of 13 so the little one you know 
but he's he's a little easier he's more emotionally intelligent he's just more intuitive he has more common sense than the other two thank goodness because the last one that's going to be in the house I think is going to be the easiest one because I'll be like checked out when the other two were gone especially the girl the 14 year old girl she's she's hard right now <laughs> oh goodness it's just not right <laughs> it's not right so um yeah I think you know kids have we've kind of the pendulum has swung we used to have I had so many responsibilities and I was kind of you know self-managing from a much earlier age and now I think we're very protective and want to protect them from suffering I want my kids to suffer I want them to figure out how to manage their emotions before I'm not there with them so that they're not kind of oblivious when they hit the real world and so you know we try to they have they have, uh, you know, an allowance and they have to do their little accounting and their little fake checkbooks and, you know, they have their chores and we try to give them some real world structure, you know, as much as we can now to teach them, okay, later it's all you. Yeah. It's all you. That's good. Okay, where is it? Oh, right over there. I have some in, I can scrape it out of the. I can, yeah. Yeah, that's happened to me before. <laughs> Where is it? Okay. Okay. It's good. Right. No. Okay. Still aggravating it. You know, I, yep, I don't take anything like that either. Um, Cause it does disrupt your gut microbiome and the microbiome is really what we need to help with all that inflammation. So so you're saying, so the people at home can hear you. For a tendonitis, you know, or okay. really just any inflammation, an arthritis, yeah. you know, a skin rash, yeah. like how can we more, you know, I don't like the word natural, but how can we more naturally deal with these things? Um, you know, for me, when I, I had plantar fasciitis, oh, which is, a, it's a, and it's an awful thing. It's terrible. And, you know, I had to stop running on the road. That was a game changer. I only run on trails now or sand or soft surfaces, no more road or pavement or anything like that. Um, but I'll tell you, you know, my food was already dialed in. I'm already plant-based. I didn't have any room to go there. Yoga was the key. I started doing daily yoga and mm -hmm. I did five to six days a week yoga for six months straight. Yeah. And it, it eventually got rid of it, but you have to stop what's hurting, you know, and I had to stop running on the road. I started running on trails. I switched my shoes. So now I, I was running an ultra brand, which is a zero drop shoe. That was a little, that was part of my problem. Mm. So I switched into Hoka, which has a, has a four millimeter typically drop. And that took a little pressure off of the tendon. So if you're in a shoe that keeps your foot like this, you're going to have this to take a little bit of pressure off of that tendon that's a problem right now. So that lift, that little bit of drop, what is would probably drop? help you. What is so it? a zero drop shoe, your foot is flat. Uh -huh. And you're, you know, like this is a foot. My hand is a foot. I actually do have toe thumbs. Everybody at home can't see this, but <laughs> my thumbs actually look like toes. So it's kind of funny that I'm now using my hand as a foot model. Anyway, I like to keep things light. So a zero drop shoe will be flat. Like your foot okay. is on a flat surface. If you have a drop, it's going to, it's like a little bit of heel lift. Okay. Because there's a drop from the heel to the toe. Okay. So when you bring a drop in, you're going to kind of, your foot motion is going to be different. So when you're lifting off and you're running uh -huh. you're going to have a smaller angle here between your foot and your leg and it's going to take a little tension off of that tendon 
that may help you to switch your shoe to something more like a hoka for a while, get out of trouble, and then you can maybe experiment with ultra again. I alternate between them now, hoka and ultra. And I'll give a plug for what's probably our mutual partners, Track Shack. Mm -hmm. If you've never been fitted for sneakers, they are so wonderful. It's free. It's part of the process. They will watch you walk, bring in the sneakers that you're currently walking or running in. They'll see how it's worn. I mean, I had the same thing with plantar fasciitis till they switched me up. And so, yeah. And yeah, I can't track shack. It's on Mills Avenue. It's been in business since 1977. John and Betsy Hughes are just wonderful members of the community. They do so much amazing work. So, Yeah. Yep. Have you tried bionics? When I, I have a high arch though. Do you have a high arch? Okay. Okay. Yeah. My feet are very flat too. The other thing I did was I switched, I wear a, it's called the Hoka recovery sandal. Mm. And it's kind of, it's like, um, UFOs are softer than the yeah. Hoka. They're a little too soft for me. The Hoka has more structure and it has perfect arch support for my more flat foot. I never am barefoot, right. never. never. Today I have like these fancy sandals on. These are not good. <laughs> no, these are not good because they're flat. Yeah. Okay? So I'm like intentionally creating an arch when I'm standing here to try to like replicate my recovery sandal. Um, but that Hoka recovery sandal was a game changer for me and to never be barefoot. I have like five pairs of them. They're everywhere. So I can always like be in one. I have them in my car right now to change out of this (laughs) when I get in there. Yeah. But, you know, it's really being intentional about your nourishment. So you're dealing with global inflammation, but also the way you're moving those tendons and your foot care. So between all of that, there's probably relief somewhere in there. So I noticed people have moved on to dessert. How's the pudding, everybody? Yeah. Allison, do you want to talk, did you talk, talk about, about the process? I, don't I haven't so. talked about it. I'm going to talk about that now. So the, the pudding is made with silken tofu. And um, so this is a great way to add in some soy into your diet. And I use the, this is the brand of chocolate, dark chocolate I use. It has, it's free of 14 different allergens. So it's wheat, peanut, tree nut, dairy, casein, soy, um, egg, sesame, mustard, lupin, added sulfite, fish, shellfish, and crustacean free. So it's just pure cocoa. So, um, and then the cocoa powder. So I just mix, I melted the um, chocolate on the stove. I, I boiled some water, put a glass um, bowl on top and constantly stir. You can't walk away because you'll burn it. And you just constantly stir to melt the chocolate chips. And then um, I put it in my Vitamix with um, silken tofu you drain the water out of it and add the cocoa powder powder and the maple syrup and a little pinch of salt. And then you chill it overnight. It's delicious. I did try freezing it and put a, like a popsicle stick in it to see if it would taste good, like a popsicle. And it was pretty good. So I prefer it as a pudding though, like this. Um, and you could, I, I would add some berries or some coconut. You could really mm-hmm. judge it up with whatever flavors you want maybe some hemp seeds if you want to have some toasted nuts on top. Yeah. Great way to add in some. I love three cacao nibs on top mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Like whole cacao beans. Yeah. Crunchy. That's so good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I loved those growing up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so let's talk. What are some other health benefits of soy? like heart disease and I mean it is it's a wonderful antioxidant rich anti-inflammatory source of protein and it's even when we're talking about tofu it's a great source of calcium you add calcium in the process of making tofu and so that's a good plant source of calcium when we're talking about tempeh that's a good source of probiotics and it all contains fiber which feeds your gut microbiome So it's just a wonderful, wonderful, high protein plant food. I mean, I eat soy once a day at least. Yeah. Yes. It does. Mm -hmm. 
It does. It does. And that's another beautiful benefit of it. And so some of those things are just, you know, like hot flashes and vaginal dryness and all the horrible things that happen when estrogen stops. Soy can help some of those side effects. And it's, well, it, it does not bind the same receptors that our human estrogen binds. Okay. And so, and when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about mainly the breast cancer thing. And so that's where the difference is. So it has the beneficial effects of helping hot flashes. Okay. But it does not cause breast cancer and in fact, reduces your risk of getting it. Okay. Um, so there is some overlap in some of these non-cancer related receptors. But it's a wonderful thing. And I even recommend it for my patients on the hormone blocking pill after breast cancer, bring this in and it'll help them with some of those side effects, the hot flashes, because it's a menopause. We shut it off with a pill or we shut it off just by going through menopause. You kind of end up in the same spot, um, but it, it, it is helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, And the other thing that's helpful with any of postmenopausal symptoms is just more fiber, more plants. Mm -hmm. And that helps to change your metabolism. Okay. It changes your metabolism. When you're in a postmenopausal state, we don't have the estrogen from our ovaries. We do have estrogen from peripheral fat tissue, but it's not enough. And so your body composition starts to change. We lose that signal to maintain muscle mass and to keep body fat low. And then we start gaining it right here. Our muscles start to become marbled literally like a, like a piece of, you know, cow flesh, you see a marbling and we like celebrate that our muscles start to become marbled after we go through menopause. Cause we don't have enough estrogen to say, keep the muscle tissue intact and strong. So we have to bring in other signals to help do that. And a the lot marbling's of, like fat. Yep. Like, it's just like, yeah, that's when you like lose uh, muscle tone. You're like, like why, the, the why am I getting it? Yeah. yeah. Why am I getting the Whatever we call it. Yeah. Know? Yeah, it's just, it's these hormonal changes. They change the composition of your body, but you're not powerless in this situation. We just don't often know what to do. So we need more fiber to keep our metabolism going, but we also need to change the way we're working out. And so we often think, oh, I just need to get my 30 minutes in on the elliptical and like watch a couple Netflix episodes. <laughs> we got to change the way we're doing that because we have to find, we have to provide a stimulus for that muscle tissue to remain. And the stimulus is lifting heavy weights and doing interval training. So no more 30 minutes at just like, you know, moderate pace. We need you to do maybe even just 20 minutes and you're doing four quick bursts where you're really getting going and then you're backing off and you do another burst and then you're backing off. You need these high interval type of things where you really provide the stimulus to keep your body composition, you know, the way you want it with less fat, more muscle, and then heavy lifting is the other thing. So no more five pounds, you know, for 25 reps, we want to do something like five reps, three times for a couple lifts, like deadlifts and squats and bench press, and then you're done. So you're in and out, you're lifting heavy, it's efficient, you're providing that stimulus to keep muscle, you know, tone, mm -hmm. and to keep your body weight down. Okay, it has like the same hormonal effect as estrogen does. But when we lose estrogen, we got to do it this other way. And a lot of times we're not, we're not doing the right workout. Yeah, we're just like elliptical lean and like the little three to five pound weights yeah. and thinking we're, you know, working out and we are working out but it's just not going to get you where you want to be. And it's going to be frustrating. Yes. Yeah. You can reshape your body, mm -hmm. but you got to change the way you, you know, because when we're in our twenties, thirties, we're just elliptically yeah. and three, Talk five pounds. Right. Center. Now you, you got to like get at it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, it's just shorter amount of time. So it's more efficient, it's more difficult, but you'll get where you really want to be, you know, mm -hmm. without being so frustrated. So. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Again, they're not the same. Nope. This is not, this is not estrogen. This is soy. It's not a, it's not human estrogen. We do not behave in the same way. It's, it's, that's not what I meant. Uh, if I said it that way, I'm sorry, that wasn't what I mean. It's not a replacement for your estrogen in any way, shape or form. 
it's a good source of fiber and antioxidants and calcium and then, you know, form of tofu, a good source of protein. Okay. But it has nothing to do with replacing your human estrogen. It can help with side effects post-menopause, like hot flashes and things. Um, but it's not replacing estrogen in any way. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? wondering about I couldn't hear you sorry this is oh like menopausal cramps menstrual or not menopausal menstrual yes. cramps if yeah. the questions of soy can help relieve menstrual symptoms yeah so for some people yes it can help um those symptoms are inflammatory symptoms when you're having cramps and the mood changes and the acne that's all inflammation pretty much anything that happens in our body that we don't like is inflammation and so Soy can help those things if you're already kind of eating a clean diet, you know, and we've removed all the other sources of inflammation. And so I, I always say, you know, let's, uh, if you want to think about your life and kind of the six pillars of lifestyle medicine, it's our food, our movement, our sleep, our stress, our relationships, and then substances like alcohol, tobacco. And so what can we do in these six yeah, yeah, yeah. pillars to kind of optimize and move ourselves further away from inflammation rather than closer. And for a lot of people, they want to focus on food first because you got to eat, you know, you can't avoid it. So like, let's work on it. And so it's really bring in more plants, start phasing out some of the animal products. You do this as quickly or as slowly as you want to do it. But as you do that, as you bring in more fiber and whole plant foods, everything will start to kind of get better in terms of your any health conditions you might have because they're all inflammatory related okay so fiber helps the gut microbiome which lowers inflammation and helps your immune system so cramps are an inflammatory reaction to hormonal fluctuations bring in more fiber you'll have less cramps like i don't even know when i'm going to have a period it just happens i have no symptoms whatsoever yeah and it's been that way for years and years and it's been that way because of the plants right you know so does it help your periods not be as heavy like it some, can cuz i know someone in particular she is a wreck when her periods are coming yeah. but her diet is not very clean sure. at all yeah and i'm thinking like if it if that if yeah. i could if here, this is a solution, eat more clean yes. fiber and plant. fiber is the key. That's yeah. our biggest deficiency in this country. It's not protein, it's right. fiber. And it's because our food is so processed and they're, you know, strip all these convenient foods. They don't really have a, much fiber. In yeah. Them. And yeah. how much fiber do you eat in a day? Well, I have tracked my food from time to time and I'm over a hundred grams in a day. Our requirement is very low for men and women. I mean, if you're only getting the requirement 25 grams a day for women, I mean, that's hardly any fiber. And I see a lot of clients one-on-one -on -one and analyze their food records. Yep. And they're not even meeting the minimum often. And it's, yep. it's we have to change the mindset about how we eat so that we are getting all that extra fiber in. Yeah. And you, you don't- Plants. You, you, there's no yeah. way you can be protein deficient. I've never, ever in my whole medical career seen a patient with protein deficiency yeah. ever, but we're obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. It's in everything. You got enough protein in this meal today, probably for your whole day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause this is a very high protein soy based meal. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Don't focus on protein. That's going to, you're going to just by eating food, a variety of food in your day, get enough protein, mm -hmm. be obsessed with fiber. Fibers only in plants. Mm -hmm. You start with one serving a day, and if you feel good doing it, maybe you go up to two servings a day. And it's usually between one to two servings a day is mm -hmm. nice. And you just, you, know, you choose organic soy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. About nightshades, I'm, if, if you have an issue with it, then I would avoid it, but I'm fine with nightshades and, yeah. and eat it. Yeah. Dr. Gundry is like, yeah, the nightshade man. Um, <laughs> he, yeah. 
that's not something that's um, well supported in the data. <laughs> so um, food allergies exist. I've never met anybody allergic to a nightshade. So you, no, they're just, they're just another, yeah. You're like, they're oh. another beautiful plant food. I eat all of my eggplants and peppers and tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're beautiful sources of different phytonutrients. Yeah. 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 You can probably eat them and get benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So who wants to guess how many different plant sources we had just today in these meals? 28. So we are close. There you are. Yeah. Yes. There's not beans. It's just tempeh just broken up yeah 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 Th those are all temp <laughs> they're nope, fermented all soybeans fermented soybeans yeah yeah so you like we, did you see the the green soybeans that i used to put in here so that those are soybeans so these are fermented soybeans so yeah 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 you could add some beans to it if you wanted to but yeah Oh yeah. And this one, I don't know if it's organic. This is the only brand that they sell at Publix. So that's where, and I don't have a Trader Joe's so close to me. Publix yeah. is literally, I can walk to for my house. Trader <laughs> Joe's has a good organic one, but it's non-GMO at least. Yeah. yeah. home. Thank you, Dr. Orman, so much. My Thank you, pleasure. Allison. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. Don't forget to do your post-program surveys. Now that would tell us your favorite thing you learned today. And I'll pass that along to yeah. Allison and Dr. Orman, but let us know what you'd like to see us do in the future. So thank you, everybody. What? Fiber? Like a fiber-filled one? Yeah. Okay. Yes, definitely. Yeah. You're so welcome. Yeah. I'm glad you and, all came. Don't, like, don't, okay, biggest takeaway, don't just